Hello and welcome to Go Digiscoping with me, Simon Brumby. So in the last episode, we spoke with photographer turned birdwatcher turned digiscoper, Mr. Robert Wilson, and we followed his voyage through photography to date. And in this episode, we are going to speak with a birdwatcher who turned uh, digiscoper, effectively. And perhaps this episode should be entitled not all yard birds are created equal. Certainly when I see the photos of the birds coming out of Glen's yard, I'm about ready to pack my things up and move to Arizona. So on that note, over to you, Glen. I'm Glenn Kincaid. Uh, I live in Santa Barbara, California, and I've been digiscoping for nearly four years. I came to digiscoping from the birding side. Never, I've always taken pictures, but I consider it more like snapshots. Never had like a big camera. But when I got hooked was I had ordered my equipment. I had my scope, I had my tripod and camera, and I hadn't even taken the camera out of the box yet. And I looked out of my window and there was a raptor sitting out there. So I put the camera on. Uh, I'd never used the camera before. Took a few shots through the, the glass window didn't want to scare the bird off, opened the door, took some more shots, took some video. It was a, a Merlin, a falcon, which I had never seen at my house uh, before nor since, and it came out great, and it was amazing, and I was hooked. I, I like the, so there's a bit of black magic to it, you know? Uh, with the, if you get a camera, right, this lens fits with this camera, it's, it's known to work, it works, you set it up, it always works. With digiscoping, you've got to figure out how it, all the equipment plays together, and you can go out there and take a series of images, and they're crap, and then you push the button again, and it's perfect. So, it's, you know, a bit of mystery. The shots that come out are just so much more satisfying. I mean, if they all came out. If I get a bird that's technically good, in focus, uh, I'm satisfied with that. If I get it actually doing something, that's that's really good. Uh, but this week, I've just seen so many possibilities of what people can do with this equipment that uh, you know I, I will be looking at things in a completely different way. Subjects. Uh, my favorite digiscoping subjects are hummingbird. Uh, where I live, we have them year-round, and we get four or five different species a year and they're amazingly beautiful and with the scope you really get to see each and every feather and when they move in the light it just changes dramatically and you can, you can really catch all that. Top tip. Uh, the thing it took me a long time to learn at the beginning was um, you know with photography it's all about the light and that's even more so with the scope. It's more sensitive to your relationship to where the light is coming from. And it took me a long time to learn uh, there's going to be a whole lot of shots that you would like to take that are just not going to come out. I mean, you might get a good record shot if there's a bird you've never seen before, but you're not going to be printing it out and putting it up on your wall. So there you go. Thanks for that, Glenn. Um, thanks for sharing your I images and your insights into black magic and uh, uh, mechanical devices. Uh, it's very insightful. Just one more picture before I go because I couldn't quite fit it into the, uh, the interview, but I really love it. Couldn't fit it in. Really liked it. Wanted to share it. Thanks for that. And talking of sharing, please remember to share the channel, uh, like and subscribe, and that way we can build up a bit of a community and get things going. Also, feel free to post comments, uh, as long as they're relevant, obviously. I don't know what your cat's name is, for instance, so there's no point in asking that. Uh, yep, okay, thanks, and until next time, go digiscoping. <laughs>